Humpty Dumpty had an unusual problem. We have a problem too, but ours has a solution. Jesus Christ came to our wall. Jesus Christ died for our fall. So that regardless of death and in spite of sin, through grace, He might put us together again. That was compliments of Chuck Swindoll. Folks, no matter how high our wall, no matter how hard our fall, because God loves us and has poured out His grace upon us, we can be put together. There's a story of love and grace in the Old Testament, actually in 2 Samuel chapter 9, about Mephibosheth. And folks, I may mess that name up before I get all the way through this, uh, this brief message, but uh, that is a mouthful right there. Uh, at the time of Mephibosheth's birth, he had the finest of, every, any, of everything any child could have. And his future was secure because he was in a direct line to inherit from his father and his grandfather. His father was Jonathan, the son of King Saul, king of Israel. The tragedy hit Meshibbeth's... Meshibbeth's... Yeah. Yeah, Mephib's family, okay? Yeah, that'll, that'll help. In battle, the Philistines, with the Philistines, his father and uh, two uncles and his grandfather, King Saul, died. At the age of five, Mephib was going to fall but not from a wall. When the report came about the deaths of Jonathan and Saul, the rest of the family feared they were going to die too. And so, out of fear, the nurse picked up Mephib, and they started uh, running, but Mephib fell. And he was crippled in both feet. He was lame the rest of his life. Now, I don't know how much time had elapsed, but David became king after that. And we pick up the story in 2 Samuel 9, uh, beginning with verse 1. David asked, Is there anyone remaining from Saul's family I can show kindness to because of Jonathan. There was a servant of Saul's family named Ziba. They summoned him to David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? I am your servant, he replied. So the king asked, Is there anyone left out of Saul's family that, can show, that I can show the kindness of God to? Ziba said to the king, There is still Jonathan's son, who was injured in both feet. The king asked him, Where is he? And Ziba answered the king, You will find him in Lodabar at the house of Mature, son of Amiel. So King David had him brought from the house of Mature, son of Amiel, in Lobar. David had been very close friends with Jonathan. Meshib's uh, father. And uh, David wanted to show his love, support, uh, and grace for any of the family members of uh, Jonathan that were left. 
Now, we're not sure at this point how old Mephib was, uh, but one of my sources uh, thought that he might be a teenager. Now, Saul, uh, some of you, uh, most of you probably remember the, uh, the story of, of King Saul. Saul was jealous of David. David had done some really mighty things, and Saul was just, uh, he just couldn't stand the, the attention that David got, was receiving. And so he tried to kill him. So Mephib might have been thinking about that and uh, thought that uh, his invitation to, to appear before uh, David caused him to fear for his life. And he had good reason to be scared because it was, it was the custom back then and probably still is in some countries today uh, that uh, when uh, a new king takes over, then he, rids, uh, he gets rid of all those who were connected to the former king. So Mephib was, he was probably really scared. Well, Mephib was brought before King David. And of course, not able to stand, he was sitting on the floor, and he bowed his head in fear for his life. And David called him by name. And Mephib answered, I am your servant. And David said in verse 7, Don't be afraid, David said to him, since I intend to show you kindness because of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all your grandfather Saul's fields, and you will also also eat meals at my table. Those words may have shocked me, Phil. But hopefully, he... It caused gladness to come to his heart. And it was a relief, I'm sure, for him that he was not going to be harmed, but that he was going to be shown grace and love by the king of Israel. Now, Mephib uh, spoke in verse 8, saying, what is your servant that you take an interest in a dead dog like me? He felt no worthiness whatsoever for being in the presence of the king. But David did not answer that question. But he called for Saul's attendant Ziba, and he said to him in verses 9 and 10, or part of 11, yes, okay. I have given to your master's grandson all that belonged to Saul and his family. You, your 15 sons, and your 30 servants are to work the ground for him, and you are to bring in the crops so your master's grandson will have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, is always to eat at my table. And Ziba said to the king, Your servant will do all my lord the king commands. It was only by the love and grace of David that Mephibosheth was worthy of eating at the king's table. David showed him undeserved favor. I mean, he had done nothing for David. Couldn't do anything for David. And the king was 
And the grace of the king was given to him because Mephibosheth was a descendant of Jonathan. Jonathan and David were best friends. And they had made an agreement, an agreement that David would never cut off Jonathan's family when he became king. David remembered that. And he fulfilled his agreement with Jonathan. The rest of the story is in, uh, at, from the end of verse 11 and through verse 13. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table, just like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth and had a young son whose name was Micah. All those living in Ziba, Ziba's house were Mephibosheth's servants. However, Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table his feet had been injured. Mephibosheth's good fortune was not by luck, it wasn't by fate, nor because of his goodness. He received the grace of the king because of the relationship that David had with Jonathan. So you see folks, relationships matter. And the one that matters the most is the relationship we have with Jesus. Our relationship with God is possible because Jesus has extended grace to us. We did not deserve what He did for us on that cross what he went through in the garden. We should have taken that punishment ourselves. But he took it for us. In his first letter to Timothy, Paul wrote, chapter 1, verse, beginning with verse 13, I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, a violent man, Yet because I had acted in ignorance and unbelief, I was shown mercy. And the grace of our Lord overflowed to me, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This is a trustworthy saying, worthy of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Like Paul, there are times when we are our own worst enemies. Because sometimes we rebel against God. Sometimes we are disobedient. But our Lord comes and He, he stands ready to receive us, to walk with us, and to bring healing to us. Healing is possible if we will form a relationship with Jesus. Now some of us may have emotionally, spiritually, financially, or even physically limped into church this morning. Some of our wounds are obvious. We can, we can see them. We can see that each other has wounds. But then there are others that we keep hidden. But the Lord knows. The Lord knows the struggles that we have. We don't have to be perfect to come to the Lord's table. We're all sinners. But hopefully, hopefully, we are all striving, we're all trying to be like Jesus and be obedient to His commands. 
The invitation to this table this morning is conditioned on whether we will accept the Lord's love and forgiveness. Will you? Will you do that? Will you accept the love of Jesus who allowed His body to be nailed to the cross for our sins? The invitation to the table is conditioned on whether we all accept God's grace for the times when we have not listened and ended up wounding ourselves and sometimes wounding others because of disobedience. Coming to this table is conditioned on whether we desire to walk in the ways of the Lord and if we will confess our sinfulness to the Lord. The beautiful thing about coming to the Lord and eating at the King's table is that these elements are symbols of forgiveness, healing, and peace, which are available to all who come.